Hello guys, this is Mr. TriPi and today's video is going to be about the different software you'll need to make games. The first type of software you're going to need is called version control. So version control is used to control the different versions of your software. This is useful because you can create separate versions such as a base version and maybe one with an experimental feature that you're not sure whether you're going to keep or not. Then you can have those separated and merge the differences together later once you decide that you want to keep it. This is also useful because you can use it to keep older versions of your program. So you could restore to an older version in case you messed something up. And it is also useful because you can have multiple people working on the same project. So you can have the guy that does the levels work on the levels. The guy who's doing the programming, work on the programming files, and the guy that's doing the art, do the art files. And then you can combine the changes from their separate versions and have one final version. So probably the most popular one among at least smaller game devs is Git. Git is easy to use. You also need to make sure that you have your... You also need to have... You also need to make sure that your version control system it, you also need to make sure that your version control project is backed up on a separate server. So get on to that. Probably the most popular one among smaller devs is Git. Git is probably the simplest one to set up because there are a lot of hosting websites such as GitLab, GitHub and Bitbucket that allow you to use Git and have it backed up automatically. There are some problems with it though. It's more targeted towards regular programs rather than games as it doesn't work well with large binary files like you're going to have with all of your textures and all of your sound assets in your game. So it works best with smaller games. You can use Git LFS or large file system to give a little bit of a boost in how much of those files you can use. But for like the main assets, programming and stuff, you want to keep your project under one gigabyte. While in LFS, you could have more like 10 gigabytes total or something along those lines. Next is Perforce, which is popular with large projects like a AAA game or something. It works in a bit of a different way from Git, so it can deal with large binary files rather easily. I believe it is free for small teams, but you'll need to pay for a larger one. I also believe that it is a bit more difficult to set up than Git is. There's also Subversion, which is similar to Perforce, but it is open source. Generally speaking, I hear people don't like it as much as the other options. But if you want to be able to deal with larger files and be free, might be a good option. The next type of software you need is a game engine, which contains an editor for making game levels and like prefabs and such, and also contains a lot of the base code for your game, such as simple rendering and physics code in a simple game loop. One option you might like is Godot. Godot is open source and is quite a small file size. It allows you to animate anything in the engine and it allows you to nest things easily because everything in it is a scene. It contains programming tools inside it, such as a text editor and a visual code editor. Godot works for both 2D and 3D, but as of right now, it's probably a better choice for 2D games. Another popular choice is Game Maker, which is great for 2D games. It features a lot of built-in tools, such as a sprite editor, as shown here, and code editing. It works on all the major platforms. Another great choice is Unity, which is great for both 2D and 3D games. It is probably the most popular game engine ever. It contains a very modular component-based system and has a great asset store for getting lots of assets you can and tools you can use in your games. Another great choice is Unreal, which is a AAA game engine that can give you great 3D graphics. It's used in lots of AAA games such as Batman games and Street Fighter. 
Next up, you're going to need some sort of code editing program, such as an integrated development environment, IDE, or a plain code editor. So the most popular IDE is definitely Visual Studio. They have a free community version that you can use when you're small. And later they have a pro version that you'll have to pay for once your business gets up to a certain level. There's also a Visual Studio Code, which is completely free and is a basic code editor. There's also Atom, which is quite similar to Visual Studio Code. Another good choice. Next, we're getting into our 2D art programs. So we'll start with Photoshop. Photoshop is a very powerful image editor. Great for editing photos and doing painting and such. There's also GIMP, which is a free program that does the same thing as Photoshop, but to a lesser level. It's great if you want a free program, but people do tend to find its interface not as easy and it doesn't have as much functionality as Photoshop. A nice in between is Infinity Photo, which is available for both iPad and desktop. It's got a lot of the functionality of Photoshop and still has a great interface. And it's $50 for a permanent license, so a lot better, cheaper deal. So pretty good option. Next we got Krita, which is more focused on painting and is quite powerful at that. It's open source and free, so definitely a good option. You should definitely check it out. Now one of the nice things about Krita is it's got some features that are great for texturing your 3D games, such as wrap, which allows you to make a tiled texture. So very easy to make yourself hand-painted tiled textures in Krita. So that's one thing you might want to take into consideration. Next, we're going to get into pixel art. And you can use pretty much anything for pixel art, even just regular paint. Although for paint, you would have to use like a certain color, such as maybe bright pink or something. They'll be set as transparent in your engine. So one of the most popular programs is A-Sprite, which is a great pixel art editor for animating and having layers and transparency and stuff. Another similar program is Pixel Edit. Another one that's free is Graphic Scale. And another one that you could use is called Paint.net. Make sure to go to getpaint.net, not just paint.net. Paint.net only works on Windows, and you can kind of think of it as Microsoft Paint, but with a few of the most important features of Photoshop, like layers and transparency. Now we're getting to the 3D programs. And because there are a lot of things to do in 3D, you might want to keep multiple programs, such as one for regular editing and animation, and one for sculpting, maybe one for texturing. So the first one to start with is Blender. This is going to be a great one for most like indie devs because it is free and open source and it's quite powerful. The new version 2.8 is offering a lot of improvements into the interface so that it'll be easier for a new user or for a more experienced user that's using parts that aren't so easy to use on the keyboard shortcuts. Another program you might want to use is Maya. Supposedly it's it's much better than most of the other programs when it comes to animation and is probably the most popular program in AAA. So it is rather expensive, but they do offer an indie version for cheaper and a free educational version that you can use to practice with. I would recommend this for people that are considering practicing game dev and maybe eventually going into a AAA team as an artist so that you have experience with Maya. Another program also made by Autodesk is 3ds Max, which is great for modeling. It has a workflow where everything is a modifier, which is very powerful. It is also very expensive and they don't have a cheaper indie version, but it does have the free educational version. So I wouldn't suggest this for most indie devs, but if you want to get into AAA modeling, it wouldn't be a bad idea to use this on the side in the educational version along with Maya to understand how to use it. 
Another great choice is Moto, which is cheaper, but I hear that it has a great interface that makes it very easy to model. Next is Magica Voxel, which is based around voxel editing, which is kind of like the pixel art of 3D, where it's made off cubes instead of just little square dots. This is probably the most popular voxel art editor that I know about. Uh, there's also, when you get into sculpting, there's ZBrush, which is the most popular one in AAA dev for sculpting purposes. So you might want to get this on the side of, say, Blender or Maya if you're doing sculpting heavy or if you want to work in AAA. It is pretty expensive to start, but it has always been that you could freely install the next version whenever. So if you had the first version, and let's say this version is the 20th version, you could st still install it for free now. Another popular choice for sculpting is 3D Coat. It's a bit cheaper for the first version, but you have to continue to upgrade. It's also really popular for creating your textures and retopologizing your high definition sculpts. So some people even get both ZBrush and 3D Coat to get the best of both worlds. Next for texturing, we got Substance Painter and Substance Designer. So you can use Substance Designer to create tileable textures for your game assets. And then you can go ahead and use Painter to paint on the different tileable texture materials onto your UV set. So you could have like a person model and have this area with a skin texture and this other area with a clothes texture. Another one that's rather new and is still in beta, so it's currently free for about a year, they say, and it's called Mixer from Quixel. Currently, it allows you to create tileable textures, and that's it. I believe that later I'll probably have some painting tools to allow you to paint it directly onto a new 3D model, but right now they can only create a tileable texture. So another program you might want to consider is Armor Paint, which is very cheap and is used for painting your te tileable textures onto your 3D models. So you might want to either use this in combination with say Mixer or you might want to create your own textures manually and then put it into here to paint them onto your models. Another great tool is called Houdini. They have a fairly affordable version for indies and it, it allows you to procedurally create models which is very great for when you have a lot of different variations or need to create a big world. It's a little bit weird to modeling, but it can be very powerful and it's a great choice to add to your workflow for making games. Now we're getting to the sound side of things and I'm not super knowledgeable about the sound. So I asked my sound guy to help give me some suggestions. So its first suggestion is called FL Studio. He says it's a fully featured doll, which is fairly cheap. Next he suggests Zebra 2, which he says is a fantastic synth that has lots of presets and is super useful. He also recommends Cinemax Studio Strings, which is a good string VST with a natural legato. Also he recommends Audacity, which is a good open source audio editor. Next we're getting to more of the project management type of things. So one thing you might want is Trello or a similar program which you can use to create a board with list of all the things you need to do. So we can have like features and we can, when we start working on it, we can put it into doing. And then later we can put it into done when you're done. And then you can do the audio, footsteps are done, etc. Also, you might want to have some office software so that you can create things like your design doc and create like a spreadsheet with contacts for media when you get into marketing. This was Mr. Tripie and thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to help me grow. Thank you.